Hi everyone, Peter Lisiaga here, and this is uh, my podcast called Pete's Podcast, Episode Two. And I'm very excited today uh, to talk to you guys about some of the things that have been on my mind, on my heart, over the last several days since the last podcast. And uh, I've been really focused on discipline, and uh, just not only for myself but for my students. And for those of you that have been uh, connecting with me, many of you are martial artists. Many of you, obviously, are some are parents out there. And also, there are uh, military law enforcement out there. And um, I appreciate you guys so much. But what I want to do is uh, I'll share with you a book that, that I read several years ago called A Disciplined Life from uh, Richard S. Taylor. And I, I'm not too sure how I got this book, but... Uh, I know it's old. I think I might have found it in a bookstore many years ago, and I just loved. You know, I've always been into discipline and always <laughs> focused on being disciplined. When I saw the title of this book, I opened it up, and I, that was it. I had to have it, and so I got it. And I dug it up a couple of months ago just to refer to it. Uh, once again, I'll do that uh, periodically. I'll go to books that I put up in storage that have really uh, been very powerful and impactful in my own life. I'll go back to them and pull them out and revisit them. And so the last time I looked into this book, I believe probably was about maybe eight years ago. It was the last time I looked into this book and I reviewed my notes. So anyway, I wanted to share some things with you uh, with respect to um, this book. Now, uh, um, let me just read some of the things in, uh, in the content section, just the content. For, you know, it just says, dis you know, chapter one was discipline, the key to power. Chapter two is discipline, the mark of maturity. And chapter three is the perils of discipline. Chapter four, uh, discipline and holiness. And chapter five, the case for imposed discipline. And then the last chapter is how to become a disciplined person. And I'm going to spend a lot of time on this, this one here, this chapter here, and just pulling out some of the things that I took out of it from my notes in it. But let me go ahead and I uh, took some notes down here. And I'm going to read to you from my notes here, and then I'll get to those points that I got in there. And first, I have on the top here, God will not look you over for medals, but for scars. That is another way of saying he does not want soft and untried warriors. In today's turbulent world, we need disciplined men and women, warriors tried, true, and battle-ready. The challenge of today's society is in his striving for the way of least resistance, self-indulgence, and gratification with no cost. Sacrifice, discipline, and restraint. These words are ideas that are hard to find, let alone expect, from today's generation. And those are thoughts that I wrote down afterwards after some thinking and revisiting my notes and thinking. And I could not help but review this book. And this book was written, I believe, in 1962. I believe 1962. That's one year after I was born. And it's amazing how this information, this book, still resonates today. And so same sentiments. We have different technology, but uh, it's the same today as it was then. And so uh, struggle is discipline, doing the right thing, whether you feel like it or not, which is what we teach at our school, our martial arts school, Donato Karate Center. And so what I want to do is I want to go ahead and uh, give you some thoughts on my take today, 2017, me being 56 years old now, and I think the first time I read that book, I was probably in my late 30s. 
and highlighting those notes. And a uh, um, couple of things here for uh, how to become disciplined. First of all, I have top here, no shortcuts. Have the willingness to work hard, follow through, and be patient. The undisciplined person is forever looking for ways to avoid the hard work and grind to quickly get to what they want through shortcuts. There are no shortcuts. Yes, you can uh, expedite a situation. You, if you have a goal, a desire to get somewhere, you can uh, learn as much as you can to, uh, to find out what you need to do to get there, but you need to get to work, and it's going to be hard work. And there are no shortcuts. It's going to take as long as it takes. You just need to be patient. And one thing that I've learned at 56 years old is that uh, um, time is going by fast, and it's going to come when it comes. I remember when I was a kid, um, kid being, let's say, in my uh, late teens, and I'm thinking that, you know, by 30, by 30, <laughs> when I was 30 years old, I was looking at myself to be uh, uh, well off and ha have it together and um, living a life of, you know, uh, of, of comfort and not hard work. And I think many, uh, many of you that are my age can relate to that mindset that you thought at a certain age you would have it together and you would be living the life. And here I am, 56 years old, still working hard. Now I've learned to enjoy every moment and live in the moment, live out loud because life is short and I'm enjoying that. But what I've also learned is that there are no shortcuts to uh, um, accomplishing goals uh, as far as the big goals that, uh, like for instance, uh, um, having a, a, a powerful marriage that you can really uh, um, not only uh, grow with and enjoy, but also uh, share with others and just have an exciting marriage. That takes time and you got to build up. It doesn't happen overnight. It's constant and never ending. Work on it. It's hard work and it does get easier, but I think the easy is not so much in uh, in the hard work, but you. it's easy because you get used to working hard and you get used to putting your hands to the plow and, and moving. You get used to not giving up. You get used to being persistent. You get used to being tired and exhausted, but yet not giving up. So you get used to that and you get accustomed to that. And so, but there are no shortcuts. It doesn't happen overnight. The next thing I have here is uh, uh, where or when to begin. My answer is simple, here and now. Start with the little things, get up early, brush your teeth, shave, eat breakfast, exercise, have good hygiene, get clean, schedule your day, and be on time, be punctual, and things like that. Start with the little things, but start when? Now. Where? Here. <laughs> right here and now. Okay, and uh, um, a lot of times I'll have people come to me and say, hey, Pete, you know, I, I want to, you know, lose weight or I want to start exercising or I want to do martial arts. I want to do jujitsu. I want to do this, do that, blah, blah, blah. So, uh, you know, when do I, I don't know when to start or how to start. And I said, well, right now and just start with the little things. And so uh, that's that's my idea, mindset behind that. When to start? Here and now. Next thing is, you know, to become disciplined. How to become disciplined? Train the body. Exercise, eat healthy, rest, and be aware of and practice a relaxed, steady control of body movements. Fidgeting, nail biting, constant body shifting and, sh and scratching. And this is not only a sign of nerves, but it feeds that condition. It's also uh, also bad habit, right? Bad habit. Now, bad habits, and I'm not talking about something that's physical or a neurological condition, but just plain old bad habits. Stop the bad habits. Be aware of them. What are you doing that are bad habits? Stop it. The tapping, and, and it's funny that they have these little devices they call fidgeting devices, I don't know what they're called, the fidgeting, kids are doing it, and it becomes, uh, it's, it's, it's an, an, an incredible and interesting thought behind this. You know, somebody is tapping on the paper like this, they create these devices 
for fidgeting where they can start making noises with these things, just twirling them. And I, I don't get it. I really don't get it. The bottom line is your fidgeting is a bad habit. Stop it. And uh, now I'm not a therapist or psychologist or neurologist and none of that. I'm Peter, a master instructor, and I've been on this, um, this life of mine for a short 56 years. What I do now is that if I'm aware of something, I have the power of choice, be aware, and I choose. And so I choose not to fidget. And if you catch me fidgeting, make me aware of it because I need to stop that. <laughs> Why? Because I want to have a disciplined life. That's my goal, be disciplined. Next thing here is, uh, um, I just wrote here, whip the hard ones. Get it done. In other words, st don't start with the easiest thing in the day and then work towards the hardest thing. Turn that around. Start with the hardest thing and then finish off with the easiest thing. And uh, that's it. Just get it done. Tough things first. Tough things first. That's why I like waking up in the morning. Toughest thing is to get up. <laughs> so I get up early. And just to, to prove to myself that I can do it, I can make the choice to do it. Is it easy? No, the last couple of days has not been easy. I got up, I got it done, trained my body, I was victorious. And uh, um, that was hard. So I start off with something tough and get it done. And then I work my way through my day with the things that I have to do. Next on the list here for... Uh, Becoming disciplined is cultivate pu punctuality. Make yourself on time. I'll say that again. Make yourself on time. Being late is a bad habit, and that needs to stop. And you got to keep in mind, uh, courtesy and the respect of others demands it. There are people in our lives that look forward to seeing us, that rely on us, and uh, it's disrespectful. Uh, to be late, disrespect to life, to what we have, uh, that the blessing of time. And we're disrespecting that, disrespecting other people. So be courteous, respect the value of how short life is, and demand that you be on time. Next thing on the list for becoming disciplined, focus your mind on your thoughts. Oh, X that. Focus your mind and your thoughts. There is no room for an unorganized mind in the mind of a disciplined person. Get into the practice of quiet and peaceful visualization without any external stimulation. No TVs, no music in the background, Nothing, nothing going on, just stopping, being quiet, being still, and just relaxing your mind, being at peace. And that's a good habit to get into. It takes discipline, but disciplining your mind to do that is a, is a powerful thing. And so if you want to be disciplined, do that. Next on the list, exploit the unexpected. Expected. And I wrote here, taking advantage of the twists and turns, the ups and downs of everyday life. Life is going to happen whether we like it or not. Things are going to keep going. You can plan your day. You can have a schedule. It could be rigid in that. But life will throw things at you. So we have a saying, and I first heard this with, uh, from Dave Kovar. And a martial artist, eighth degree martial artist, one of our uh, my mentors, he says, Peter, in your in your rigidity, be flexible. <laughs> so I have flexibility in your rigidity, and so you be structured, be disciplined, and maintain your focus on what you need to accomplish, your mission, your purpose. However, be flexible enough to. To go with the rolls of life, to uh, the roller coaster ride of life. And so keep that in mind the ups and downs, and take advantage of that. You know, these are lessons that you can learn, enjoy the ride, and put your hands in the air, just say, woo, as you go through these roller coasters of life, and enjoy it, learn from it, be flexible, and be resilient 
get through it and uh, have fun, enjoy it. Next on the list is just have self-restraint. And, and I'm thinking here just emotional maturity, be restrained from, you know, restrain yourself when you get to those emotional states, whether you're, you know, whether it's ex extreme anger or silliness, you know, anything, just really have self-restraint, restrain yourself and, and there's a right time and a right place and a right way to express yourself. Make sure you uh, maintain maintain that discipline. Next on the list is conquer your appetites. Do not overindulge in anything. Everything in, in its right measure is fun. And I'm talking about healthy things, things that are going to be productive and, and improve your life, not destroy your life. Be uh, you like food. Hey, I like potato chips. Many of you know that that's one of my things. I enjoy potato chips. It was, it's not uncommon for me to sit down with a whole bag of chips and uh, just dog those chips. And if you try to take one of my chips, I will attack you. I will storm your castle, burn your fields, and steal your chickens, and, and then take your bag of chips. And how dare you try to take one of my chips from my bag of chips. But, <laughs> but I, I indulge in that. But I don't do it all the time. So we have to maintain discipline in that, and our appetites. And of course, we know what we're talking about. Use common sense, and let your common sense be guided by your purpose and your mission. So enjoy life, enjoy the things that life has to offer, but in the right measure. So conquer those appetites, control those appetites, be disciplined. Moving on, learn to respect time. And it goes back to punctuality, but here, respecting time. Remember that the greatest things in life does take time. And don't have, as many of us have this, I want what I want when I want it, and I want it now. We have that attitude. And we have our kids that are growing up with that attitude. And the media shows that, and you get instant gratification. And so, uh, great things take time. Learning, wisdom takes time. You can go to school, you can read a book, you get information and knowledge. But wisdom, you have to live a life to, uh, um, to get wisdom, and that takes time. And things that I knew 20 years ago that I know today, but I know it today because I've lived a, a life and I've seen these, this information that I learned 20 years ago practiced and lived out and now I have the real life experience that wisdom so it takes time there's nothing can be avoided by that I know my grandfather you know, passed away when he was 98 and he told me in his early 90s that be, continue to be a st student never stop learning and uh, you're going to continue to learn but as you get older uh, those lessons are going to become more and more uh, um profound for you and so wisdom so that takes time i'd love to have the wisdom that a hundred year old has but that's going to take time it's going to take a hundred years it's going to take me 44 more years so i got 44 years to 100 and so i'm looking forward to that day when i'm 100 to look back and uh, to look at the things that i think that are important today and look back and say and and, and just realize you know uh, 44 years from now what's really important Okay, that's interesting for me. So respect time, respect what it takes to uh, accomplish your goals and really appreciate the journey and truly appreciate the value of that accomplishment. And it does take time. Next thing on the list, you know, becoming disciplined person is welcome the responsibilities of life. Embrace your responsibilities. Right, I write here as a, a cultivate a sense of responsibility. Let your attention be selfless, and um, think of your family and those that rely on you, and realize that these people need you, and they rely on your loyalty, your presence, your support, and your cooperation. And it's something I'm really learning over the last couple of years as a teacher, as a an instructor, not only a senior instructor over 
other instructors, but also being uh, an instructor under other instructors and being mentored and guided by someone else and and realizing me being on time and being prepared and being equipped, trained, healthy is extremely important. And these are my responsibilities. And I'm excited the fact that I've been blessed with a healthy body, but I'm also blessed with having um, the insight and learning now at this stage of my life, the responsibility of being responsible and taking care of my body, taking care of myself and that um, others rely on me. And so um, I saw, I read the other day, being undisciplined is actually a selfish act. And uh, I want to be selfless. I want to think of others and lay, my, lay down my life for them. But the life that I present to others is, a, is someone that lives a life of discipline, that's reliable, that's punctual, that's prepared and ready to move to action. And moving on, being disciplined. Cultivate a pattern of quiet meditation and prayer. Get in the habit of taking time throughout the day to stop and quiet your mind. Take the time to focus or refocus on what is important. And I, I do this throughout my day and uh, I'll stop. Right before I, I did this podcast, I started recording I studied, went over my notes, did some editing, did some more research, got this together, and then I took a break, took a pause, just five minutes, it just cleared my mind, and, and uh, you know, uh, meditated a bit, breathe, uh, did some breathing and a short prayer, because I want to make sure I stay focused, and then I came on here. Then later on, I'll do the same thing. I'll do it right before I go and teach martial arts later on. And it's a habit that I've created throughout the day. I sometimes even do it. If I'm in a, if I see a situation getting stormy, where also I'm getting this roller coaster, it's going up, click, 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 and I'm ready to go right down really fast. It's going to get pretty wild. I, I find myself just pausing, taking a breath, and taking a quick moment to prepare and quiet my mind, quiet my body, and get ready. And then I just get to it and get it done and enjoy the process. So get into the habit of cultivating a pattern of, of quiet meditation and prayer. Next on the list, and last one here, is uh, my thought of mentors and discipleship. And we're talking accountability here. Uh, being a, a disciplined person is hard period. Being disciplined is tough. It's hard. And having someone in your life to help you on this journey to a disciplined life is extremely important. It's vital. And accountability is a great way to set yourself up for success. And we cannot do it on our own. I learned this many, many years ago. There's no way that I'm going to reach the success that I hope to reach. And my, for success for me is simply this, is, uh, is being the best that I can be so that I can inspire, motivate, and encourage others to be disciplined and do the same, to share their lives, share their knowledge, and share the wisdom and share their experiences so that others may learn and then pass on the knowledge. And that's, my, that's what I would love my legacy to be. My, I'd love my legacy to be when people think of me when I'm long gone, that, gosh, Peter Lisiaga, I remember this guy that he, he uh, just gave of himself. He, he, he was a, a teacher that, that uh, taught from the heart and taught from example and did the best that he can to uh, be disciplined and show not only uh, young people, but everyone, that if you choose a life of discipline, that it's possible. There's no perfection in the journey. However, there is, uh, it's a possibility where you can wake up every single day and be a warrior and fight a good fight to do what you know in your heart is the right thing to do. So you cannot do this on your own. Have mentors, have people to help you along the way, and uh, which is why I love doing uh, um, uh, doing martial arts and teaching martial arts, which is why I teach it today, which is why I'm doing what I'm doing right now, sharing this knowledge here. And uh, my thought is this, my thinking is this, and uh, whether one person sees this or a thousand people, 10,000, that doesn't matter to me. I know there's one person out there that will hear one thing that I'll say and that will resonate with them 
where there will be a shift in in their life, in their thought, in the way they do things. And I already see that happening. Now, when I speak to teachers, a lot of times I'll I'll I'll, I'll speak to teachers or or. or other teachers, I'll be in groups, I've done that before where they're um, asked to come to schools and speak. And I'll have teachers come to me and say, well, you know, yeah, I get discouraged. Uh, I have a child or student and it's tough. The kids don't listen to me and they're uh, discouraged at the fact that they, uh, they, they feel like they're not reaching students. And my encouragement to them is simply this. Your goal is simply just to be the teacher and share and inspire and motivate and know that you will touch one's life. That's it. And I'm a perfect example of that. And I live with that truth simply because I'm that one person. There are many people that were in my life that poured into me, that encouraged me. And I did not appreciate it then. But here I am, by, uh, by God's grace, I'm here today remembering those people that planted seeds in me. And I'm that one person in that person's life. And I want to encourage you to remember that. Okay, and uh, martial arts for me is my way of doing that. Martial arts for me is, is uh, my way of uh, reaching out and sharing the knowledge and uh, just speaking to that one person. Okay, and uh, yeah, next thing, hey, I have on my list here is martial arts training. I did want to finish off um, this podcast by, uh, um, by answering a question that... I, I saw the other day, it wasn't asked of me directly, but it's been asked of me over the years, a lot of times when, uh, when a parent um, wants to sign up the child for martial arts, and uh, they'll ask the question along these lines, is what do we, as martial arts instructors, what do we do to discipline children at, at our school? What do we do to, to discipline children at our school? Now, many years ago, when I started martial, I started teaching martial arts full time, full on, all in, uh, with Master Donato at Donato Karate Center in in uh, 2000, 1999. But I believe officially December 2000, and uh, I believe yes, I believe it was around then. But 1999, I think I started training with Master Donato, and then it's, it was in 2000 I came on full, full, full steam, full on as an instructor. And the first thing that I noticed was that many of the students that we had coming in, you know, had challenges. We had, you know, uh, th these are terms that I never knew of, but I learned very quickly: ADD, ADHD, Tourette's, Asperger's, Spectrum. All these terms I knew nothing of, uh, but then I. Sh quickly found out about them. These are learning challenges that a lot of our students that were coming to us were having. And I had to learn how to teach martial arts to these students. And I found out sometimes if a student was acting up in class, they necessarily were not being uh, um, you know, malicious. They maybe with their ADD or ADHD, that was a neurological disorder that they didn't they couldn't control it. And I had to learn quickly how to teach. And so over the years, Master Donato uh, worked with other instructors. We came together and we found ways that we can teach our instructors on how to teach, how to run a class, where within our class we'll have all these students coming from all kinds of uh, um, challenges, backgrounds. And uh, many times parents bring their children just for that reason. Say, hey, look, my child has this challenge. They don't have discipline. They don't listen. They're not unfocused. You know, um, they have emotional out, um, you know, uh, anger outbursts. Help me, help me, help us. And they bring, us to, bring them to martial arts so that we can help them with us. A lot of times students are coming to us um, because the parents, uh, many times parents, don't know what else to do, so they bring them to us. And of course, we have students that come to us, parents that just want the kids to have fun. They want the kids to you know, have a great activity. They want them to learn self-defense. All that, we have a lot of students that come for that, but we also have a significant amount of students that come because uh, they need discipline. And so parents ask, you know, what do we do? as a martial arts school, as martial arts instructors to uh, um, discipline the children. And so what I want to share with you is what we do, what we actually teach. We do teach our instructors 
what to do. What do you do if you have a child in your class that's just misbehaving for whatever reason? You're telling them to do, do something and they're just simply not doing it. What do you do? And I know when I started martial arts, there was physical punishment. I know when I was in Catholic school, uh, you know, they had the ruler and they also had the, uh, uh, the bottle of soap. If you were not to speak uh, you know, the way they would like you to speak, whether you would curse or you'd be very disrespectful, they'd wash your mouth out with soap, <laughs> which was <laughs> not a good experience. Yes, I have experienced that. Or if you did something, the teacher would then slap your hand with the ruler and uh, physical punishment. Yes, I've experienced that as well. We don't do that. Uh, as instructors, we don't do that. We found better ways. We're smarter now, more intelligent, I would like to think. And uh, so there are things that we do do. And there are uh, uh, strategies. And what I want to do is go through what we have here, this is from our resource site for our instructors. We do have a resource site for our uh, instructors that come on board. We have uh, uh, students, and I'll tell you a bit of the journey that our students take uh, at our school. And first, they come on as a student, they train for a while, they commit themselves, they get into a habit, and they, uh, they apply themselves, they're training consistently, regularly, they're progressing through the ranks, and then they, may, then they say, that, hey, you know what, I want to become a black belt, they commit to black belt, and then they say, that, hey, you know what, I want to be a leader as well, a role model, and so we start training them, giving them um, uh, opportunities to be that role model and then uh, they get their black belts and then they're given the opportunity to uh, to get more advanced training and to uh, decide whether they'd love to be certified as an instructor to pass on the knowledge to take all this cool stuff that they've learned and share it with someone else in the very uh, um, smart way and sharing the knowledge. So if they come into our instructor training program, then we go deep into not only the uh, advanced techniques and skills of martial arts, but also in how to teach it, how to pass it on. And we have uh, um, a lot of information that we share with them and takes time. Of course, nothing happens overnight. But here's one thing, and there's one thing I brought out, it's called um, this particular paper here is called Dealing with Challenging Children. And uh, number one thing that we have on this, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine different things that we teach our instructors. First thing is that we teach them not to prejudge. And uh, we have to believe in our students. We have to believe that no matter where that child is, no matter what they're doing, we have to see beyond that. We have to believe in that child that they have value, they have qualities, they have talents, they have skills, and they have what it takes to be successful. And so we do not judge them on their actions initially. We look at what they're doing that gives us information this way. It helps us to decide on how we're going to communicate with that student. So we don't judge. We evaluate, yes, and we decide the best course of action for that unique student, uh, but we believe in them. We believe that they can be successful. That's number one, believe, okay? Next, number two, is we build a rapport. We want to uh, be teachers to the students, but we can also be mentors, coaches, guides. We could even be, uh, I don't wanna say friends, but friendly and let them know that we are on their side and that we're gonna be there alongside them and helping them along the way. And yes, sometimes we want them to feel like we can carry them. Sometimes they can't do it on their own, but we're there to help them through it. So we wanna build that kind of rapport to support them Next on the list, number three, is that uh, it has to do with you know, emotional maturity and emotional uh, responsibility. In other words, we got to keep our wits about us. We got to uh, control our temper. Sometimes it gets, it's a little frustrating because 
we humans, I'm human, you know, I'll have days where, you know, I'm frustrated, I'm struggling with whatever go is going on in my world and maybe something personal. When I come into the classroom, I, I am trained to discipline and disciplined to, to put my emotions to the side. Again, there's a time and a place and a way. And so when a child is struggling in the class, I'm trained to not get upset and I and I, I could I'm aware of my emotions enough to know that I need to breathe and then proceed with responsibility and remember that it's not about me it's about the student and so I need to be selfless I need to deny myself and how I'm feeling and do what I have to do to help that child. And we teach this to our, our instructors and we teach it not simply through words, but through action. And I like to say that uh, um, you know, when there's a storm in the classroom, I want to be the peace in that storm. So keep your temper and watch your emotions. We teach our instructors on that. It's not easy and it takes time, but Awareness is the key. Be aware of the fact. Next on the list is don't threaten <laughs> unless you plan to follow up. And uh, we make sure the instructors know. We let them know what things they can do to teach a child, discipline a child, to teach a child. If a child's misbehaving, what I do, and this is what I encourage the instructors to do, and I teach this by example, if a child is uh, not listening, I'll call them off to the side and I'll tell me, hey, look, you know, you're doing a great job today and it looks like you're having a little bit of trouble right now. You're not being focused and, uh, and I know you want to be focused. I know you want to be this great kid. So, and I want to help you with that. I'm here to help you with that. But right now you're moving around, not being very focused. And so uh, um, I want to help you with that. So what I need you to do, okay, let me know if I can help you, is I need you to be focused. What, what do you think? Can you be focused right now? And more often, 99% of the time, they'll say, yes, sir. The, it's almost like you, you, uh, you, you switch them back, bring them back, and you reframe them, and you give them, remind them of their mindset, remind them of their vision. If they want to be a black belt one day, and you can be that black belt today, just be focused. And sometimes I'll even take the child and put them in a position where they're a role model. And uh, I'll put them in the front where they can then model the focus. And it's incredible. So we teach our instructors to really, to get creative and to, to uh, within seconds, transform that child to where they are focused and paying attention. Now, at times, we may have to, a, a child is just, if, they're, uh, if they have ADD or ADHD, or especially if they're on meds and they're struggling with that between medication, maybe med meds are, are, um, are running out and then, you know, it, it's, they have to be put off to the side. I'll take them off to the side. I'll let them sit. Hey, maybe you need to take a break. Sometimes if the parents are there, I'll say, hey, you know what? You need a hug from your mom. Go get a hug from your mom. And this is a great way for the parents to then engage and encourage the child. Child. And sometimes um, the child just simply, it's just uh, not their moment. They're just struggling so much. I always want a child to leave with a sense of accomplishment and that they were victorious. And sometimes I, I tell a child, hey, look, you came today. You did your best and uh, you, you did your best. And that's the best thing you can uh, look for uh, in your day, right? It's just, I showed up, I did my best. And uh, at least I showed up, okay? And I tell the kids, hey, I'm just glad you came today. And uh, maybe it's not the best day for you, but you came and you did your best. Did you do your best? And they all did. I believe all children, that's why I tell our, our instructors, every single child on their worst day are still doing their best. And a lot of our instructors get this aha moment. What do you mean? Oh my gosh. And I tell them, think about it. You know, they are really doing their best, even if they're doing it maliciously, something deep down inside, you know, uh, had caused them to do whatever they're doing. And I don't know. I'm not a therapist. I'm not a psychologist. But what I do know that something triggered it. I don't know. So at this moment, their actions, that's their best in that moment. 
So I appreciate that. They showed up, they did their best, and that was their best. As long as I don't lose my mind, I don't lose my cool. Because when they lose their control, they lose their cool, they don't have focus, when the students don't have their focus, and they're all over the place, and they're struggling, uh, when they look at me, I want them to see calm, peace. It's no big thing. It's okay. This is life. The roller coasters of life, the ups and downs, the ins and outs. This is okay. This is life. We're going to get through this. And you'll be okay. That's what the students need to see. That's what the students need to hear. So uh, don't threaten unless you plan to follow up. And uh, don't threaten at all. And I don't believe in corporal uh, um, like punishment, physical punishment. You know, if, uh, uh, back in the day, they used to have us do push-ups, push-ups. I don't believe in that. Okay, I might say, hey, you know what? You need to work on your discipline. Okay, you know what builds discipline? Physical fitness. Yeah, getting strong. So let's get your body strong to make your mind strong to get you more disciplined. So let's drop down to uh, do some di uh, some push-ups, jumping jacks, burpees. What do you want to do? What's fun for you to get strong? And so we'll maybe engage in that uh, fun endeavor. But uh, I never threaten. Don't threaten. It's not good. Bad. Next on the list, be fair and make sure that the punishment fits the crime. Again, goes back to what I previously said. Uh, if a child really is not um, listening and you've established that the child is just, you know, being uh, honorary, maybe they're testing you. We have children that test us. They'll test me. And I'll say, are you testing me? That's okay. I'm up for the challenge. Okay, and once uh, I, uh, I build a rapport in that moment and help the child see that, and once the child realizes, gosh, you know what, I did mess up, and uh, they sometimes need time for this, they'll come back and they'll apologize. I'll do this. I said, you know what, I appreciate your apology. You know, I pr really do appreciate that. And I know you're doing your best, but let's do this. Let's learn from this. Okay, what I want you to do and then I'll proceed to tell them what I believe is the best thing for them to do. Sometimes I have a child go home and write down what they did, which is, you know, it's not something revolutionary, this strategy, but I'll have them go write it down or draw it out or, you know, uh, speak to their parents about it or, you know, or do something at home and then come back next time and share with me what they did and then I'll give them you know, a reward. A reward could be, let's say, a pat on the back, or a reward could be maybe a, a stripe on their belt, because we give out, like, stripes on their belts, something. But I'll let them know that, uh, uh, that they can do something uh, as a consequence to help them learn and to reinforce the lesson. And so I don't really like looking at it as punishments, but as consequences. And I share this with the instructors. And that's my mindset, and, the, and I model that. And hopefully, when they, are what, they being the instructors, are watching, that they will then uh, see that model and how I teach. And next thing here is that uh, catch them doing something right. This is simply this. Keep an eye on all the students. Every time a student does something that's awesome, you let them know, like, great job there. Great job, Joey. Great job, um, Dylan. Great job, Maggie. Awesome. Give him a pat on the back. And, and I go out of my way to go around, and I, 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 I want to touch each child on the shoulder. Tap on the shoulder, a little gentle touch. Good job there. Great job. I love your work. I see you working hard. Even if a child is not getting the technique, I'll come up, tap on the shoulder. Oh, gosh, look like you're working really, really hard there. I'll give them one or two suggestions. Then I leave it. I walk away. But I, I watch the hard work. I look for the good. I look for the greatness in that child. So look for something great, something right. We share this with the instructors. And it's funny, many of the instructors, when they first start helping out, it's a lot of negative. They says, oh, harder push-ups, more, harder, harder. And I have to go to them and says, I want you for, the only thing I want you to say is good stuff. What are they looking for? What are, you, uh, what are they doing that's right? Look for that. And just compliment them. Compliment them. Great job. Great job. Awesome. Great. Great. You're great. Excellent. Excellent. Awesome. Awesome. Good work. Good work. Good work. And 
let me do the corrections. Let me, or senior instructor that's been trained and has been uh, been through uh, several years of teaching, has the experience, let them do the correction. Next on the list is ask questions. Always asking questions and uh, uh, discussing what happened. Hey, look, you know, I called you off to the side. Do you know why I called you off to the side? Well, you were doing this. We were asking you guys to do this, and you were doing this. And uh, were you aware of that? Okay, you were aware of that, or you weren't aware of that? And then the conversation continues along questioning. And the questioning helps them to think. And then you also get feedback from them. So then that helps you to then proceed. So we teach our instructors to ask questions and ask questions that they can then build on this way as they can move forward. And number eight is uh, expectations and feedback. Give clear expectations. Okay, kids, I want you to do this high block. I want it over your head like this. Okay, guys, and uh, let me see how you guys do it. Ready to go one, two, and then you watch it. You give them what you expect them to do. Then you watch it, and they give them feedback. Oh, that's great. Go a little bit higher there, Tommy. That's good. Okay, good. Don't cover your head. Okay, you do it stronger from that, from the outside, from the inside, and you give them feedback. Oh, that's great. That's great. That's excellent. Excellent. Do it this way. It makes it better. Give them feedback, constant, never-ending feedback. And one thing, last thing we teach is this idea. We got it from Steve Covey, Seven Habits of Successful People, is seek first to understand, so empathize. When a, when a student is doing something that is disruptive to the class, stop and, and really take the time, take a moment to understand that student. What's going on with that student? If it's a new student, uh, you have to say, well, I know nothing about that child. Is, does this child have ADD, ADHD? Do they have, uh, um, are they on the spectrum? You know, you don't know. And if, if none of those, does something happen at home today or something happen at school? And start asking yourself, you know, uh, 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 and getting understanding of what possibly might be going on in that child's life and really start empathizing and understanding, not accepting the behavior, but seeking first to understand that there's something more to it than just what you see. And I learned a long time ago, a long time ago, a long time, yeah, long time ago, that uh, it's not about the behavior as much it is about the heart, what's going on in their hearts what's going on, because the behavior is just a symptom of what's going on deep down inside. Now again, I'm not asking our instructors to be therapists, psychologists, none of that, but it helps us as instructors to see there's more to it than just the behavior. Hope that makes sense. So anyway, uh, that's what we do, that's what we teach, and how we teach discipline, and how we discipline our students in there and I've come a long way in the martial arts world in how we um, teach our students and um, we always uh, make sure that our instructors know what to do. So I hope that was helpful. I'm looking for my last paper here because we're going to go ahead and go ahead and close up. I appreciate you guys for spending the time. Uh, with me and I hope that uh, you got some uh, uh, some cool ideas, at least some insight into my mind and hopefully it was helpful to you. I know there's one of you out there that it was and I, I truly believe that. Uh, share with me what your thoughts are. Share with me uh, some suggestions that you might have and I'll let you guys know that uh, I always believe in positive feedback and uh, critique that's great you know and I, I love critiquing and one of the things that I uh, I, I, I do and that's why I have mentors people hold me accountable is that I want them to look at what I'm doing and say hey look if they see something that they believe that's not productive that's not positive let me know because I need to know whether uh, um, uh, making a positive impact or a negative impact because I don't want to make a negative impact. That being said, I know that uh, that great lessons come through challenges. And so uh, if somebody gives me a critique, if you give me some feedback, uh, I, I, positive or 
negative critique, uh, I will filter it through um, uh, through this filter of uh, is it something that's challenging to you or is it something that definitely is uh, um, destructive and I don't want things to be destructive. Challenging is different, okay? But I'd love to hear your feedback. And the last thing I want to leave is, uh, is this, uh, just this idea of uh, supporting the work. And the work, there's being work, uh, work being done in our community through uh, um, people in your community, uh, through the businesses, through uh, uh, youth organizations, religious organizations, uh, and find out what's going on in your community and share that. Share uh, what people are doing, what organi organizations are doing within your community. Share it where? Share it uh, with your friends. Share it uh, through social medias, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, you know, wherever you are, LinkedIn, share and uh, let people know what's going on. And next thing you can do to uh, support the work is to, uh, to join a martial arts program, get disciplined. I believe in leading by example, I don't believe in, I believe gone are the days, or go, the days of thinking that someone can tell, a parent or a teacher can tell some, a child, a student this, do as I say, not as I do, need to be gone. We parents need to lead the way by example so that we can truly tell our children, follow me. And uh, martial arts, uh, again, I could be biased, but from my experience, martial arts needs to be part of a family's life. And of course, you know, I'm biased in the sense that I want you to come to our school, Donato Karate Center, because that's where I teach. But there are great instructors out there. And our martial arts uh, style may not be a style that you would like to participate in. Maybe you like jujitsu. Maybe you like uh, um, something more soft like Tai Chi doesn't matter as long as you go into a martial arts program with a great instructor and you learn martial arts and everything that comes under this idea of learning and training in martial arts you will be disciplined and uh, you will learn many things so support the work and get out there join the martial arts program also supporting the work means getting healthy staying fit and making sure you uh, share your journey to inspire others to do the same. And of course, if there's anything that I can do beyond what I'm doing right now to help, let me know. I'd love to help out. Okay, until next time, you have a great day. Thanks for spending the time with me.